moving forward. Aloha, aloha, how are you? And uh, I guess I'll be the first one to say it uh, for the season, at least on my end. Meli Kalikimaka. Uh, uh, we're going to start, uh, you know, it's it's December, kids. It's December, so there's a lot of cool things going on in the Christmas verse this year. You know, and I'd like to start by talking about the, uh, you know, I may be speaking too soon, but I don't see too much of the war on Christmas routine from the Fox and Friends crowd. So it just doesn't feel like Christmas yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? There isn't someone playing a victim. So uh, let, let's beat this in advance. All right. In these parts, we say what is respected at everybody's dinner table. So, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a classic guy in the sense of winning Rome. So if they say happy holidays, you say it right back. And if they seem like the cool peeps that you could say back yours, you say back yours. It, it's really, you know, I don't think anything outside of, like, the mainstream media conversation on the war on Christmas, I don't think is real. I think it's hyperbole generated by press just to sell more Christmas. And we already sell Christmas enough to ourselves. So much so that I myself even got caught into the uh, nostalgia loop this week as I started watching the Santa Clauses. And I've only watched a couple. Um, I'll binge some more and, and have some more for next week. And uh, But yeah, uh, 30 years since... The last time we saw Tim Allen don the red and white, and the world has changed quite a bit. Uh, he's got, uh, you know, more kids. He, he, him and the Mrs. Claus are kind of feeling the retirement years coming, and his magic is disappearing, uh, which is, you know, kind of causing unrest with the elves. I, I thought that this was a smart way to take it because for a franchise that started on a mantle, I was kind of confused that, like, it didn't get handed off as fast as it did. So if they hand it off to who I think they're handing it off to, uh, it, it's kind of cool. And I don't know if it's going to be, like, a you know, more than one. Or I, I've got speculations, okay? I've always wanted to write Santa movies. So I've definitely, I've definitely got a few speculations on where this show could go from – from watching enough and writing enough and being in the industry on this one. So um, overall, I like the way that it's going. Uh, I find it interesting that Disney has loaded just the right lines up for Tim Allen that he as an actor feels like he's fighting the war on Christmas while he's being a meta dialogue on the war on Christmas while we're also having a good chuckle that he doesn't get it. Um, I think that's smart, especially for, you know, the wider audiences on both the left and the right. This this show does a really good job at pulling us back into the middle. And I, I think that that's Santa for Americans is really one of the last few middle grounds we have. So if we can get rid of the war on Christmas vic- self-victimizing routine, like Christmas could be a lot cooler, I, I think, at least. Uh, so, I mean, so for what I've seen so far, you know, uh, Tim Allen Santa Scott Santa Scott has uh, started losing his powers. He he tries getting ha- out of a chimney that he manifested, and he can't undo the diddle that he did. Um, the the elves are starting to spy on him. They I mean they they've reopened the Santa Claus card, and they're investigating all the additional things. And the big thing that comes up is the successes clause. So. Um, he he has to think about like if he's getting tired of being Santa or if he's you know got no magic or maybe handing it off to change the magic spirit in the world like now's the time. So I I think this is a very interesting thing because then you know it it really shows Santa as a mythical superpower mantle like it's like Green Lantern but Santa <laughs> you know and so I I like this in the sense that like. You know, the hat gets handed off and the the mantle moves on. I mean, I guess to a sense the power could help that person live forever if they could be the best Santa. I I don't know how how deep they speculate into that because they kind of cover up the whole we don't talk about previous Santas thing, which I thought was kind of sad because, like, if you had a hall of, like, information on the previous Santas, wouldn't that just, like, not only richen the mythos, but it would, like, it would change, you know, 
Scott's motives like entirely like if there was a lesson he could learn but I like the idea of this is he's gonna have to look for his replacement so far I've seen him try to go back to you know his his first son which his wife doesn't even know that his his friggin her father-in-law is Santa and she thought he was just like some chum troller up in Alaska which is just crazy so like him saying no to that and the, and then the the younger kids being like ah I like the north pole but do I have to be santa so it's very interesting and I liked I like the fact that like the north pole is such a weird experience to raise kids in that one kid is escaping into VR just so he could like feel what it's like to walk a dog or mail something <laughs> so I mean it it really is like I mean it's kind of a good like touch on like we've all been trapped in our house for covid for a couple years and this is the weirdness that our kids became so i think a lot of us understand these behaviors that that these kids have because our kids have them too right now um but definitely looking to see how this develops with his potential santa uh we we as i've seen so far uh cal Penn gets offered to go to the north pole with his daughter I like this idea. I think he really is like the next generation Tim Allen if he's played right. So and more. So uh I will I will continue to watch. That's on Disney Plus. It's getting pretty good and I expect it to get better. Um I will have to say though, like I do like the Santa Claus series in general. I thought three was kind of a throwaway, like that was a, such a straight to VHS experience. But, uh, you know, I think they have a lot to do to catch up with, like, the quality that, like, um, Santa Chronicles did with uh, Kurt Russell. Because, man, that's a Santa right there. Anyways, uh, I'll come back with more of that later. Uh, If we're going to keep in season, what's better than, you know, (laughs) a man with a bowl full of jelly than men that shake their jelly? Uh, I'm still watching Chippendales. And it's great. Uh, this last week's episode, I mean, we're now starting to get into, like, how things fall out between Steve and Nick and how, like, Steve kind of makes things hard on himself and the choices that he makes to assert dominance. Uh, we also get to see the whole rumblings about Chippendales International. So that means, like, within an episode or so, we're going to see the whole Nick splits off and runs around the States and you know, tries to do his own thing, and then we're going to have, you know, the falling apart of the home club and everything. So I I have to say it's getting juicier every episode, and then they just, they just overjuice it in the middle of the episode, and you get some crazy stuff. I still, like the first time I have to say after watching the two episodes, I still sit through the credits uh, in the beginning because it looks so damn Grand Theft Auto cool. Um, but the characters, the people, the interactions, I, I really, I really like, uh, the whole Steve and Irene play. I feel that like, it's, it's a really, like, you have to show the real people inside of it. I mean, we've like sensationalized most of this drama since the time that it happened and the way that it's been like reproduced on a hard copy or entertainment tonight or on any straight to tv video documentaries and stuff like that so like i do like the fact that like the writing team has set a window of being able to meet these people brand new and like them for at least a moment or for as long as they're deserved before we get, you know, the full story on them. And then we go, oh, God, they're a hot mess. Or, oh, God, he's a double crosser. Oh, God, he's full of himself. Or, oh, he's just misled. And it's it's good. It's good. So if you're still on the fence about it, like, guys, you know what? I don't, if you're in a good story, this is a good story. If you have, you know, issues with watching men get it on on the screen. Whatever, man. We're all pieces of meat. Just respect the fact that we exist. But it's a good story. It's a really good story. It's, like, I got to say for, like, for the more guys guys out there, it's, like, just imagine, like, you're watching, like, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, the TV show, because that's essentially what it is. It's pretty good. Um, it's 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 really just, like, all the side quests for the strip club. <laughs> um but for the ladies out there, yes, I, I'm liking this better than Magic Mike. 
Uh, I, I didn't have too much to say about Magic Mike because it just like lacked substance. It was fun, but it was just no substance. So I mean, I could have could have got that just by taking the wife to go see Thunder from Down Under. Uh, <laughs> We live in a fast-paced world where many people are too busy to sit down and read books or news articles. But thanks to Newsly, you can now listen to the news you wish you had the time to read. By utilizing AI technology, a natural human voice reads you the news, helping you grasp the information faster and more efficiently. Newsly provides the latest news updates 24-7, letting you browse articles from topics you choose. It even has podcasts, including ours. And listeners of Rabbit Holes can get their first 30 days of premium for free, allowing you to enjoy an ad-free experience by using the special promo code in our episode description. So download Newsly today for free on iOS and Android or visit www.newsly.me so you can stay updated on the things that matter to you. Moving forward. But while I will be taking myself to see, I haven't gotten to it yet because there's just not enough time in the world. Willow. Willow, it's got two episodes dropped. There's probably going to be more by the time I watch it. I'm going to try to catch up on all it. But, uh, again, nostalgia season like Santa Claus is and then Willow and Chip. It's all nostalgia, like all three of these things. And then there's just more nostalgia on the horizon because the Transformers Beast trailer like came out. And that was just, I haven't been excited about one since the first one disappointed me. So, I mean, like, in the sense of, like, they could have done a hell of a lot better. I mean, if you're a real Transformers fan, like, you cried watching, like, the OG animated Transformer movie. Like, that was just, it, dude, chicken skin, thinking about it. Um, so, I do like the fact that, like, the CG has been heavily upgraded. Like, did they finally get, like, someone who knew how to use, like, Unreal Engine or something in there? <laughs> I don't know, but, like, bro, uh, yeah, the effects team and just, like, the the faces on the robots look better. The the transforms look pretty, like, a lot, a lot cleaner. Um, and just, like, they didn't, they didn't give enough to tell us necessarily what, like part of beast wars is going to be or if they're going to like change things up but i did find like like they're they're opening up to like it's it's like proto mix with like glomming on to what was left over from the others so i guess we're gonna kind of see how everything has moved on since like you know bumblebee and revenge of the fallen and all that stuff and then or i can't remember the name it's been so long since the last transformers i mean like long in the sense that we've had a lot of content since then so i just haven't really thought about it just because like again this is a franchise that it's been hard to impress me with so i i'm going to keep an open mind because every time i really try to keep an open mind i liked bumblebee mostly i thought that, that was a great step in the right direction but uh we'll see we'll see we'll see we'll see I, i'm i'm digging like the the idea that like the uh all the animal bots the beast bots they're uh they they're they're not like fully like colored in they look like they just like rose and then they still adapting to like looking and fitting in which means like who's gonna be what but like i saw me a gorilla i saw me a rhinoceros so then where's the rat okay where the hell is rat trap <laughs> uh anyways um Let's hope like we get some more first look stuff on that and we can uh, tear it apart. I mean, films like this don't get a lot of BTS photos because a lot of the BTS is just on a soundstage or there's just a lot of empty space in 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 the frame because they haven't put the the Transformers in yet. So we shall see. But I finally got around to seeing that new Mario trailer. And guys, like it's got like he he fights Donkey Kong like on a like OG Donkey Kong senior set and then like we've got some Mario karting the Rainbow Road was there like I think that that's legit I I find it funny that people that haven't like really played Mario Kart and don't know Mario that well were like getting kind of inflamed on the whole like why are they putting like rainbow things all over and it's like bro 
if you don't know the Rainbow Road, you don't know, so get off it. <laughs> but um, I, I, I'm digging the uh, Luigi's Mansion vibes. I, I, I think that, like, Charlie Day sounds like Charlie Day, so I don't know why anybody's getting up on Chris Pratt still, you know? I mean, I guess, like, there is some measure to, like, uh, you know, really, it, it seems like they're selling the Chris Pratt part more for the fact to get non-Nintendo fans to watch this. And that's a smart move. It really is. You want you want a fandom that's going to last a long time? Like, Nintendo knows what they're doing on this. I mean, they've been around since, like, the birth of the railroad as, as a card company, Okay. So they've seen uh, the rise and fall of nations, and they still be making Mario. So I would go with their choice on this. It is their source material. It comes from their land. And I think that, you know, if you really have a super problem with it, then watch the one of the other international dubs. Because, like, the French and the German version, like, I guess they just really try to sound like the OG guy. Which then at that point, it's like, I'm sure somebody's going to, like, you know, redux it and try to get, like, other voiceovers on there. We're going to see, like, a, you know, like that Italian recut of Star Wars or something. Uh, but, I mean, all in all, I like where, where it's going. I'm intrigued. I'm in. I'm going to go see it, and I'm going to come back and give my piece on it. Um, I'm not always the biggest Chris Pratt fan, but, like, this is an advocate scenario here, like, I mean, really, guys, you want to get on the whole, this is the original voice of Mario. I was like, bro, I grew up watching Captain Lou Albano. Do you see any of us Captain Lou Albano fans, like, getting on you because he doesn't sound the the, the video game guy doesn't sound like Captain Lou? Because, <laughs> I mean, when I first grew up watching Mario, I mean, and playing Mario, Mario didn't have a voice. It was just boing, 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 jumping everywhere, and then occasionally got a new sound effect with a new mushroom-type thing that he picked up, you know? So, like, all we knew was 8-bit music and, like, battle sounds at best, you know? So, you know, when the animated cartoon show came around and then Captain Lou came around in America, like, it, seriously. Like, so unless you grew up with the the Japanese voice for the Mario cartoons or you grew up with Captain Lou, like, it, it changes. It, the mantle moves on. All right, this is a character that is that is going to be timeless beyond, like, us one day. And you have to think about that. So if they want to make it more timeless right now, the best time is cast someone like Chris Pratt. All right? And I, I think it's going to work opposite, like, the rest of the cast. And the rest of the cast really is chosen. If you look at it, these are these are all the best of what they think is going to smash a a, a central appeal for across the board. That way you're getting more than just the video game audience or, or just the Mario audience itself. It's going to transcend the pop culture and and be from the people and the other things they're connected from because how many how many people haven't thought about playing Mario ever in their life? I mean, some of us can't, would just be like, what? You've never played Mario? But, like, it's true. You know, not everybody has access to video games or wants to play video games or thinks it's worth their time. So I think that the, the American dub... Uh, of the and that's kind of the way that I'm looking at it is this is an animated film. So if we really wanted to get all like, you know, animation fan on this, this is just the American dub. So if you feel like it's not going to be cool enough watching the American dub, then be an elitist like the rest of us and watch it in a different dub. I'm probably when it when it comes out digitally, I will consider watching it in at least French, and then probably like if there's like a a Spanish dialect or something in there. Probably that too. Just to see if there's there's enough like routine change. I always like the fact that like some colloquialisms change in dubs just because you can't you can't say the th same thing. Like let the cat out of the bag is something that like anybody knows, but then like, you know, you're really gummed it up, Jimmy. You know, and that's like exclusive to like six guys in Indiana. Like nobody's nobody's gonna know. So I, I think that's always cool to look out for in dubs and you should too. Um last of the trailers though. Again more nostalgia and this is not balls guys we're finally getting indiana jones 5 the trailer has dropped and dude 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 uh the de-aging software looks as good as it was promised so that thank god they didn't make uh harrison ford look like a liar which is going to be great considering like with all the speculation on him being red hulk like he's just gonna look 10 times cooler later in the mcu but 
Uh, we've got a lot of iconic scenes from American history uh, strewn about in the trailer. We, we've got the biggest thing to me, John Rise Davies, Sala is back. So like, just wow. Like, you know, and then, and then we've got, we've got Indiana Jones's goddaughter, which I, I'm assuming from everything said from everyone that this is looking like, uh, Marcus Brody's granddaughter. So, which then makes sense that like we've at least got Sala because Sala is part of the equation for Brody, and so uh, at least to see him around for a bit is going to be cool. Uh, we're going to see scenes in the past. So, like speaking of that de aging thing, like it kind of looks like we're going to get to see like pieces from, uh, like in between the other movies or something from one of the other movies that we hadn't seen. So, like, I think that that's pretty cool. I think that this is going to, this is really going to change people's feelings towards the franchise after the last one um, and probably get everybody a lot more excited, especially with the way that, like, Empire Magazine's been covering it and, like, we're getting all these little baits. Like, I think Disney learned their lesson on the last one. But in its defense, I have to say for any of you guys who've, like, watched any of, like, the young Indiana Jones or, like, read any of the non-canon or played the LucasArts games. Like, the idea of running the aliens is not so far-fetched when, like, you know, there was a point-and-click game where you could go to Atlantis for, you know, Indiana Jones and the fate of Atlantis. And then, like, Infernal Machine. And then, like, dude, they're just, like, indie could go a lot of ways. I, I think it's funny that it's really all just defaulted back on, like, I fight Nazis after, like, uh relics from the bible or something but like I, I i really think that like it could diversify more i mean the name of this dial of destiny so like i mean they said it doesn't have anything to do with time travel but like does it have anything to do with like it's like is it integral to like the like the fate of the world or is it like do, does the device like undo things like i mean because like dial of destiny like i mean what do you guys gather from that? I don't know. Like, tell me in the comment section. I'll probably bring this up more later. But thanks for coming on the fun. Uh, <laughs> but thanks for coming uh, on the ride today. And uh, we'll catch up more later when we talk uh, Maui Weekly. And uh, more into next week. But until then, TTFN, love y'all. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs>